Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whenever you happen to be watching this lecture. All right, so it's been quite a while since I put out a regular technical video, and I thought I'd get back in the game a bit by um, covering something that I've wanted to cover for quite a while, and that is a program called SMATH. I thought I would do a short video series on um, really looking at some of the aspects of this program, what it can be used for, and why I find it so particularly useful. So for those who are not aware, SMATH is a program that you can actually download for free. It's, it's not open source, all that would be ideal. Um, so it is a free program though that is available on uh, Apple and on uh, Windows. And it has a variety of functions we will explore and a whole series of plugins that can extend its uh, operation to a much greater degree. So if I were to explain SMATH in the simplest of terms that most people would be familiar with, it is effectively a uh, MathCAD clone. Uh, MathCAD, if you're not familiar, is a program that allows you to perform, uh, well, you might refer to, uh, some, some people might refer to it as a WYSIWYG um, calculation performer or calculation program. Uh, WYSIWYG, if you're not familiar, is what you see is what you get. In other words, it is a way of producing sort of automated hand calculations. So uh, something like Excel is very good for um, uh, performing basic calculations or perf relatively large data sets, not as large as data sets as say you might be able to do with MATLAB or with uh, you know actually programming language like C or Python or whatever you're using. Um, Excel is certainly good at things, but let's look at what the problem is with Excel. Let's go and pull up Excel here. So. Let's say I go and I don't know, I wanna create a variable X and I have a variable Y and um, then I have some variable Z that will be a combination of X and Y. So five, two, just some random numbers. And I then, I, then I'll do some sort of formula where this equal, or that uh, Z equals maybe, I don't know, X plus two Y squared, two times Y squared. You can have any kind of function you wish, but this is just a, a basic example. So I'm sure you all are hopefully familiar with this level of program. Uh, this isn't really a program, but uh, um, this isn't really programming, but this level of calculation. Now, um, so looking at this, this is fine. If I open this, if I have this in front of me, this uh, Excel sheet in front of me, and I wanna know where Z, if I just open this sheet up new, if I want to know where Z came from, I can just go to Z and it's right there. I can look up the formula. B is equal to, uh, uh, basically Z is equal to X plus uh, two times Y uh, squared. That's fine if I have access to this sheet. However, um, what if I don't have access to the file? What if I want to print this out and then give it to someone else? That is where Excel really sometimes runs into trouble. Now, Excel is very is much better than uh, SMATH or MathCAD with working with large uh, numbers of uh, data points. You know, Excel of course can operate on you know thousands and thousands of thousands of lines of uh, data, while uh, SMATH is really more useful for uh, hand calculations or for what I refer to as automating hand calculations. But let's compare this. So let's first look at a limited application of this. So I'm gonna define a variable x, and I'll just say x equals, and we'll go over all of this in later videos. I'm just, in this video, all I wanna do is just introduce the concept of uh, SMATH. So I'm gonna go ahead and define x equals, what did we use there? We used five, so x equals five, and then y equals um, two, and then I can define the variable z, which will be defined as, um, this is going to be equal to x plus two times, oh, get that right, two times y uh, squared. And then that equals 13. So if I do that, let's get this here. x equals five, y equals two, z equals x plus two times y squared. Now, both of these have the same functionality in terms of uh, actually performing calculations if you set them up in the same way. So, uh, and they both share the advantage that if you change one of the inputs, the output will, automa will automatically change. So if I change x to one, z automatically changes to nine. It, it works its way through the calculation just like you, you would expect it to. And SMATH works the same way. If I change x here to one, it will go and perform the calculation. It'll run through everything and tell you that z now equals nine. 
However, the real difference comes when you print this. So if I go and print this as, let's just say, a PDF, well, let's just go ahead and do that, I end up with something like this. Uh, uh, once you print this as a, on a piece of paper or a PDF or whatever, you are left with only what is visible on the screen. All of the calculations are going to be hidden behind uh, and basically embedded within the, within the spreadsheet. So that is fine for certain applications, and it's very useful if you're trying to process large amounts of data. Um, but if I actually want to know if, uh, where these numbers are coming from, or if someone else is doing the work and I want to be able to check their work, I really need to have access to their spreadsheet. And I need to, I need to then go through each and every cell and check where those numbers are coming from. And if you've ever had to proof a, uh, a very elaborate, very intricate Excel spreadsheet, you can, uh, you can uh, understand that it becomes very difficult and very time consuming and sometimes very challenging to actually proof an Excel spreadsheet. Sometimes there can be an error embedded somewhere and because it's not just directly in front of you, um, you know, you can have a missing parentheses, you can have a missing uh, inappropriate, not inappropriate, uh, yeah, I guess an inappropriate reference where your reference, maybe you are using an absolute reference or instead of when you should be using a relative reference, et cetera. It's, uh, when working through an Excel spreadsheet, it is easy to create errors that cannot be easily um, detected at, or, uh, yeah, well, detected afterwards. But here, look what happens when I print this to a PDF. Well, I'll just go ahead and put that as, uh, let's see, hope, let's go ahead and print that as a PDF. And that seemed to have disappeared. Oh, there we go. Okay. Go ahead and print this as a PDF if my printer cooperates. Okay, print to PDF. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this in the downloads folder and let's do test. Then when I go to uh, the downloads folder where I printed it, um, modified, here we go, test. Notice, nothing has been lost. I have my X variable defined, I have my Y variable defined, and then uh, Z uh, shows basically exactly how the calculation was performed. Looking at this piece of paper, or this, let's not a piece of paper, looking at this PDF, I can see that Z is defined as X plus two times Y squared, which then equals nine. And so this program, SMATH and MathCAD in a similar way, does not do any calculations that are hidden. Every single calculation that you that uh, that is performed is defined and visible on the page, and that makes proofing and verification and, and QA quality assurance quality uh, control etc. It makes things much much easier. So, again, if you have a large amount of data, uh, Excel is definitely going to be better for this. But if you just want to run through a series of hand calculations, say if you're doing um, you know, basic steel calculations or basic concrete calculations, whether in an academic setting or in a professional setting, SMATH and its and its sister program MathCAD um, work very well for this. So, some other advantages of MathCAD, and I'm basically in this video, I don't want this to be an instructional video, just sort of an introduction to SMATH and some of the things it can do. For those who are not familiar with the program. So, some other things it can do. Um, it is capable of things like graphing, um, but I can also do uh, some really interesting things, in especially those involving units. This is where this is one aspect where uh, these pr programs like this are very famous. Well, famous being a relative term, at least among um, I don't know if famous is the right word or not, but uh, famous among engineering circles or at least civil and structural engineering circles. Okay, um, so let's say I want to get rid of this, and I can I just want to say okay x equals, let's go ahead and give it a unit. I'll say x equals 2 feet. And again, in a later video, I'll show you how to actually do all this. And then, um, but for now, I just want to illustrate how it uh, all works, uh, how it can be applied. And here, I say y equals 7. Um, I don't know, let's look at, uh, let's do the, let's do some nice metric English uh, mixing and say meters. So, if I wanted to add these two quantities together, how would I do that? Well, if I was using Excel, I would have to, let's say, uh, I, I could set up something in Excel that did something similar. I could say x in feet, and this feet doesn't actually represent anything in the program, it's just a label um, for the cell for the reader. 
And so let's see what value did I use here? Uh, five feet. So I'll put a five there. And then um, y. Uh, y equals, uh, I would want to put that in meters. And I said y is, let's see, seven meters. So if I want to actually add these quantities together, how do I do that? Well, the problem, of course, is that Excel doesn't really speak units. It just knows that there is a five in this cell. It just knows that there is a seven in this cell. I've labeled this as meters and I've labeled this as feet, but Excel has no idea what those mean. It has no idea what the relationship between these two is. It doesn't know how many feet are in a meter, etc. So I could do this a variety of ways. Now I could embed this all within a formula if I wanted to, but um, if I wanted to do it a little in a, in a way that would, uh, would provide a little more proofing, I could do something like this. Let's say I put uh, y in centimeters first, and I know that uh, there, of course, there are 100 centimeters in a meter, so I can then multiply that by centimeters. So then I've gone and converted um, my y in meters to centimeters, and then I could go and convert this into inches, because I happen to know that there are 2.54 centimeters in an inch. Or more precisely, actually, if you look at the, the definition of the unit, um, an inch, the technical definition of an inch is actually defined in terms of meters. It technically is, everyone's technically using the, me the metric system if you really get down to it. Like an inch does not approximately equal 2.54 centimeters. By definition, according to the international systems of units, a inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters. So if I want to convert Y to uh, inches, I would then just go, okay, that is equal to this divided by 2.54 to go from centimeters to inches. And then if I want to go to feet, I would have to then multiply by 12. I could do this times 12. Now, you wouldn't necessarily need to go and calculate, use three separate cells, uh, three separate conversion cells for this. You could go and actually calculate a single conversion factor for all these. I just, you know, this is just, uh, these are the factors I remember off the top of my head. Off the top of my head, I do not remember the formula to convert from, um, I don't remember the formula or the conversion to go directly from meters to feet, but I do know the metric system and SI prefixes so I can go from meters to centimeters fairly easily. And I do know uh, how to go from centimeters to inches because I know one inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters and I know one foot is equal to 12 inches. So I could go and calculate a single conversion factor, but I just went ahead and put it through a, a series of cells because this is just a simple example. And then finally, if I want to go and get Z, I believe we'd use the variable Z here. Um, well, we, 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 will, we will, we're gonna add Z. We're gonna define Z as X plus Y. If I want to add now, finally now, um, I can go and um, let's see, something is definitely not right. Hmm. That's not right. How did we get 700 centimeters? Oh, wow, I am really dumb. I'm sure a lot of you were screaming at the uh, at your monitors when apparently I didn't know how to go from inches to feet. Shows you how uh, easy it is to screw up the English system with its fun complications of units. I am an engineer. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, I, I was looking at that and just saying, wait a minute, I know about how big seven meters is, and I know about how big, um, uh, well, that's, I know about, uh, about how many feet that is, and I know that uh, seven meters, I don't know the exact number, but I definitely know that seven uh, meters is not 3,300 um, feet. That is certainly not the case, but a simple uh, multiplication versus a division will do that, but this just goes to show you how easy it can be to screw up unit conversion when you're doing it manually. But anyway, now if I want to, I should probably put a label on my units because Excel doesn't speak units. So I need to actually have a label for the reader. So finally, if I can go and add these two numbers together and I can go Z equals X plus Y. And I know that the sum of these two um, is 27.97, or I would just probably round that to 28 feet. So I have to go through three unit conversions, or one if I have a combined factor prepared already, um, and that's three things I could screw up. And also, if I was proofing this, I would have to go, if, if someone gave me this and said, please check my work, I would, or if I was checking my own work, I would have to go through each of these and make sure I handled them correctly. Let's look at the alternative or the comparable system in SMath. 
I'm just going to say z equals x plus y. I've got to use a capital because it does this differentiate. And let's say I want it, want it in feet, 27.97 feet. I didn't have to enter a single conversion factor. I didn't have to remember. I didn't have to remember a single conversion factor. What one of the very neatest things about SMath and related programs and similar programs, I should say, is that they speak units. Now, what I mean by that is, um, again, let me just go ahead and put this there for s for emphasis. Uh, s. Let's see, s. I got my caps lock on. SMath speaks units. And that is one of its most useful features. So what do I mean by this? Well, when I say SMath speaks units, what I mean is that it has some internal understanding. Now, of course, it doesn't know in real space what a feet, it, what a foot is. It's a computer program. It has no con concept of reality, but it does know relations. It knows relations. Well, it, it really defines everything in just in terms of metric units and does all sorts of conversions back and forth as you request them. But it handles all the unit conversions. So this feet here, there's a reason it's in blue. It is not simply a label. This is me telling SMath that I don't just want five of anything in particular, like I'm telling Excel, that we like we told Excel here. I told SMath that uh, I, that X equals five feet. Period. It knows what a foot is. I told SMath here that Y equals seven meters it knows what it, what seven meters is, or at least it knows it in relationship to all the other units of length. And so Z equals X plus Y. All I have to do is say, add this variable and this variable, output the result, and I get a result with all of the unit conversions taken care of. And anyone who has done any kind of engineering calculations involving units, you know that that can be a major headache. And to prove that it proves that it uh, speaks units, let's what hap look what happens if I try to do something impossible. Let's say I try to say a equals, oh, I don't know. Let me add another uh, unit here, or another variable here. Let's say a equals, oh, I don't know, seven liters. Don't want capitals there. A liter, oh, capital L, liter, here we go. So A is seven liters now. Actually, I didn't, I already used seven. Let's not use seven again. Let's say 13 or 12, that works fine. Let's say 12 liters. So look what happens with it, with, uh, with Excel. So I have A in liters and let's say I'm going to have, I try to create something called B, which is going to be the sum of X plus Y. So I can just tell, I can, I can go ahead and tell Excel that B, I'll, go ahead, I'll put my 12 in here for 12 liters. I can tell Excel to go ahead and add X plus A. And it will happily tell me that the sum of five feet plus 12 liters is 17 something. I don't know. Um, so <laughs> this, is go, this is just an example of that Excel is just a numbers editing program. It doesn't have any conception of actual physical measurements. It is blind. So you have to handle all, every single one of the unit conversions. If you don't, it will go, it, Excel is blind. It will be perfectly happy to output a completely nonsensical result. Think about this for a moment. I am, t I am, I am trying to do something that is mathematically impossible. I am trying to add a length to a volume. Now I can do, I can add any two volume units together. I can add any two length units together. I can, I can run through the conversions if I want to. I can add, I can, add, I can find what the sum of, you know, five liters plus, I don't know, something ridiculous, like eight cubic light years or something crazy like that. That would be a very weird calculation, but those would both be volume units. I could do that. Five liters, eight cubic light years. That would absolutely be, that is mathematically valid, even though it's a bit silly. But adding a length to a volume is fundamentally impossible. It is fundamentally mathematically invalid because Excel does not have any representation of units. Now there probably are some plugins that you could get that and maybe some techniques you could use to actually have Excel uh, better understand uh, units, but at least in terms of the program, base program as most people use it, it, it does not represent uh, units. But if I go and uh, let's, so then again, that's why it's perfectly happy to accept a addition of liters and 
feet and return 17 because it's just using the numbers. Now, what if I go here? So let's go back and do the same thing in SMath and say, okay, okay, SMath, I want to know what five feet and what the sum of five feet and 12 liters is. Well, I'm just going to say X plus A units don't match. I just got an error saying units don't match. And I actually wish this was labeled a little bit differently. This is one of my little pet peeves about the program, actually. Personally, I wish this said dimensions don't match because as we've seen, SMath is perfectly capable of handling all sorts of interesting and varied unit calculations. And in fact, if it doesn't have a unit in there, you can define your own custom units if you wanted to. Like I could, if I wanted to uh, in SMath, um, I could define a unit as of one layered. That is my last name. I could go and define a unit of one layered, which is exactly equal to my height. And I could do all of my calculations of length in layers, in area in square layers, and volume in cubic layers. I could do that if I want. It'd be a bit ridiculous, but I could. And if I wanted to, I could even, you know, go and do a mass measurement with equal where one layered mass is equal to my mass in kilograms or something like that. Anyway, you so it is perfectly happy working with any kind of crazy combinations of units that you want, but what it won't do is something that is physically or mathematically impossible. It is not, again, it is not mathematically valid to add a length and a volume. That concept just simply doesn't make sense. And SMath, because SMath speaks units, it will output an error here and uh, now, of course, this is a bit of a silly example. You know, you're, you're, you don't tend to actually, this is kind of an obvious example, like who, what idiot would try to add feet and liters together? Well, it may be obvious in this case, but there are other, but anyone who's done a lot of engineering calculations can realize or can remember, there are times that it's not so obvious. There may be cases where um, you're working through something and the dimensions, you know, you're just working through a very complicated problem and you can end up with uh, dimension clashes that you don't realize are there. And this, now this won't catch all of them. It won't prove that you got the problem right or the solution right, but this can be a very useful tool for weeding out potential errors of a certain type. So we will be looking more at this in later videos. I, this is not going to be a huge, long course, you know, 30, some of my, some of my, uh, some of my video series have been these long 30 plus video a series that cover entire university courses like statics or dynamics or mechanics or whatever. This is, I'm envisioning this as sort of like a, maybe a half dozen videos, um, maybe maybe even three or so, we'll see. Um, covering certain things in SMath, uh, more of a sort of episodic type format. And then maybe as time goes on, if I, if I have additional things um, that I find interesting about SMath, I might add to them as time goes on. Um, so if any of you are familiar with this, and uh, if you need, now if there are any particular things that you'd like to know about SMath, that you'd like to see how to do, please feel free to leave them as a comment on here, and I'd love to put out a follow-up video on those, beyond the things that I intend to uh, cover. All right, so that'll serve as a basic introduction of SMath, what, where you can get it, um, where, why I find it particularly interesting, and I hope that'll do it. So um, again, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I will be putting out more videos shortly on some of the uses and applications of SMath. Of SMath. As always, thank you for watching, and have a good day.